the Lord right then. I told him that our family was going to suffer. <laughs> I told him that it wouldn't be the same. You know, and I was right. <laughs> it wasn't the same without my dad around. But God had a different will and a better plan. And I had to be willing to say, not my will, but thine be done. Nehemiah had to seek for God's will to be done. And so he prayed and asked God, God, give me what to say. And God gave him what to say. Sincere faith is always followed by faithful obedience. Nehemiah didn't just get what God had to say. Then he had to do something about it. It's one thing for him to say, King, I think you ought to appoint somebody to take a bunch of good stuff to rebuild the walls. That wasn't God's will. God wanted Nehemiah to go and to rebuild the walls. You know, sometimes our prayers leave us out. God, would you please help our neighbor in need? And God may be saying to us, yes, here's the stuff you need to help her. <laughs> right? We need to put, put feet to our prayers. When God tells us to do something, we need to be willing to do it and to be a part of his answer. Uh, in Ephesians 3, 20 and 21, I've shared with you many times, it says, according to the power that works in us. God can do exceedingly abundantly all these wonderful things, but he depends on us being used to accomplish his will. Church, we need to hear that, don't we? God wants to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all that we ask or think, but we have to be willing to be a part of it. We have to be willing to do our part in it. And each of us have a part to play in it as God's children. Well, though that exceedingly abundantly, that's what I want to talk to you at the end. When Nehemiah asked uh, for some things, he, he got pretty bold, didn't he? Uh, he said, if it pleases the king, uh, well, he says, send me to Judah, the city of my fathers, that I may rebuild it. And then he says, if it pleases the king, let letters be given to me for the governors, that they may help allow me to pass through and let a letter for Asaph, the keeper of the king's force, be given, that I might have timber. Uh, he asks pretty audacious things, doesn't he? I mean, he's not just asking for the freedom to go, and he had to give a time, probably about six months to a year. And then he comes back later to serve as governor for 12 years. But he had to give a time when he'd be back uh, and he, not only does he ask about that, but he also asks that he be given safe passage there. That could be a problem in those days. And then he asks that he would be given materials, timbers, to be able to complete the work. The rocks were there. They were just scattered around. But he needed the timbers because the gates were burned with fire. Remember from chapter 1. And so he asked for those things. And then what does a king do? Even more than that, doesn't he? He said, not only that, I'll give you soldiers. I'll give you a guard to go with you. He does that on his own, inspired by God, I believe, because the good hand of Nehemiah's God was on him. God blessed him. God blessed him with more than he could imagine, more than he could ask. Extraordinary prayer precedes exponential results. If you want to see exceedingly abundantly beyond us or your think, things happen, then you have to get serious with God in prayer. If you want to see God bless you beyond what you deserve, you've got to get serious in prayer. Nehemiah fasted and prayed before he took action. Nehemiah prayed during the action to God so that he'd have the right words to say. God gave the results because the good hand of his God was on him. Nehemiah saw God do amazing, wonderful things because he was willing to pray to God as an effective, righteous man. He was willing to ask God for beyond what he could imagine. And God did more than, than Nehemiah ever thought he would. God did wonderful things for Nehemiah. That same thing is true today. God still answers prayers. He still is in the business of hearing from us and, 
and changing things. It's an open universe. God still lets prayer make a difference in our world today. Prayer does matter. It's not just words bouncing off a ceiling. Prayer changes things. Amen? I believe God, in his infinite wisdom, has allowed for us to be able to pray and ask him to use us to accomplish his will in the world. We've got to be willing to be a part of God's answer in many of our prayers. We've got to be willing to give God the chance to use us. No, you know, I, I, I don't know you very much, so I would, I, would, I, would rather, I would rather you share with me first, and then I'll let you share with the people, okay? So we'll give you that chance in just a moment, okay? I think God is gracious to us. God is doing wonderful things. You know, and it's not just the prayers that we mention uh, to him, uh, but it's also the many things that he does beyond those prayers. I, have you ever wanted a particular tool? Well, some of the guys know what I'm talking about. You know, uh, if I just had this tool, my life would be complete. If I just had this tool, everything would be great. Or you could put toy there if you want. Or for you ladies, you could put shoes there if you want. <laughs> or maybe a purse. <laughs> if I just had this, my life would be complete. What happens when you get it? Then you say, if I just had this, <laughs> my life would be complete. Isn't that a picture sometimes of our prayer life? We come to God with this really serious need, and we say, God, if you just answer this prayer. And he does. And instead of thanking him and really, really understanding how blessed we are that he answers that prayer, we shift right away. God, if you just answer this prayer. We need to take some time to thank him for his blessings as well as to ask him for our needs. Amen? He has answered prayers in our lives, and we need to recognize those answered prayers and spend much time in thankfulness to God, as much time in thankfulness as we do in petition to him for our other needs. God is gracious to us. He has done so much, and he has blessed us with so much. Yeah, we've got those things out there that we're waiting patiently for him to do something about. We've got those things, too. But right now, we need to thank him for all the things he has done and be patient with him as we request more answers to prayer. He is going to answer on his time according to his will. Would you bow with me, please, in prayer? Father, I thank you for the blessing it is to be in your house. And Lord, to know you and to, to know more about you. Father, I pray that you would bless me and everyone here with the knowledge to know what to pray for. And Lord, the faith to believe that you will answer those prayers. Lord, you are the one who can do exceedingly abundantly. Lord, I pray that I would be your faithful servant, that others would be your faithful servants, so that, that what you want done can be done according to the power that works in us. Your power in a in a servant who is willing to serve you in whatever way you choose, in a tool that you can use for your glory and your honor. Help us to be those tools that you are able to use to glorify your son, Jesus. Father, thank you for this time that we've spent together. And I pray, Lord, that the word that you have spoken to us through your word might speak to our hearts right now, this morning. In Jesus' name. We have a time of invitation. If God's spoken to your heart, you're welcome to come. I'd be glad to pray with you about some special quest, requests that you